Untitled, but known for its phrase, Blue Remembered Hills, number 40 is one of the best-loved poems from Houseman's Shropshire Lad collection. At a mere eight lines, its enduring appeal is remarkable. In its two stanzas, with their A-B-A-B rhyme scheme, and with its simple, down-to-earth and slightly archaic language, it delivers a powerful charge of nostalgia and a sense of loss that few other poems can equal. The impression left by the poem once read through is one of a gentle, pleasant melancholia, but the words of the first line have already punctured this, even if they are overlooked and forgotten in what follows. This is a nostalgia that kills, and the power of that statement is reinforced by the fact that it rhymes with hills, part of the strongest phrase in the poem. We are confronted then with a conundrum. What we take away from the poem is not exactly what we think we have been told. With Houseman the language is always simple, and so are the details, which are of a general nature. Hills, spires, farms, highways, nothing really specific. The land is described in abstract, as a place of lost content. A vagueness that allows the reader to fill in the suggestion as he or she wishes, the kind of phrasing Ezra Pound discouraged. The only clear detail is the blue of the hills, but the word remembered, inserted between the adjective and the noun so smoothly and adroitly that it doesn't even disturb the iambic beat, radically changes our perception of them. The poet is representing for us the act of remembrance. We experience with him a shared sense of loss. Wherever we come from, we all understand the emotion of looking back on childhood with the knowledge that it is now unreachable in time. And in the poem there is also the sense that it is unreachable in place. That is why it is so important for the poet to present it to us in the image of a distant landscape. He doesn't say why he cannot go back, and perhaps there is the hint that even if he did, it would be in vain. And so the land lies before his memory, shining plain, which just adds to the poignancy. It's not hiding away or buried in obscurity, but glowing out with a kind of semi-religious significance. It's a kind of taunt, so you can begin to see why Houseman talks of the air that blows from yon far country, the importance of distance emphasised again, as something that kills. It's not the fact of there being a land of content, lost or not, that causes the pain, but the act of remembrance itself. Houseman takes this even further, because he says remembrance not merely causes pain, it kills. As to what is being killed, though, he cleverly leaves that unnamed.